Greetings, and welcome back for another Music Theory Bite. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you all about Neapolitan chords. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, then this is the video for you. Let's start by talking about what is a Neapolitan chord. Well, a Neapolitan chord is a major triad whose root is the lowered second scale degree. That is, when we start spelling it, we're going to find the lowered second scale degree in the key, and we're going to spell a major triad above that. These chords tend to be considered native to the minor mode, that is, they show up more frequently in the minor mode, and when we see them in the major mode, we tend to think of them as borrowed chords. They'll take two accidentals instead of the, just the one, so in addition to the lowered second scale degree, we're also going to have to put in the lowered sixth scale degree, which is characteristic of most chords that we consider to be mixture chords or modal borrowings. They frequently occur in first inversion. So frequently, in fact, many people call these Neapolitan sixth chords, with the sixth referring to the inversional symbol for a triad in first inversion. Neapolitan chords carry predominant function. In fact, I call them part of a class of chords that are altered predominants, that is predominant chords that use chromaticism to alter one or more of the tones. In this case, because we're lowering a tone, like most lowering chromaticism, we're not really enhancing the motion towards a particular resolution, we're changing the color of the sound, making a much more deep, dark sound than we would typically expect from a diatonic predominant chord. I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. So, major triad, built on the lowered second scale degree, typically native to the minor mode, although it can be borrowed into the major mode. They frequently occur in first inversion, and they carry predominant function. With that, that's enough to get started spelling and then figuring out how to resolve these chords. Let's start by figuring out how to spell a Neapolitan chord. What you have before you is a grand staff with a key signature of two sharps. Since we know that Neapolitans most commonly show up in the minor mode, we consider them to be native to the minor mode, we're going to assume that the two sharps represent the minor key signature of B minor. So let's go back to our definition. A Neapolitan is a major triad built on the lowered second scale degree. So the first step is finding out what the lowered second scale degree is. We're in the key of B minor. The normal second scale degree is C sharp. We want to lower that by a half step. So our root of the chord is going to be C natural. And then we spell a major triad up from C natural. Of course, a C major triad would be the pitches C, E, and G. Notice also how the Roman numeral doesn't look like other Roman numerals that we typically come across. Instead of a flat 2, which you'll sometimes see for these Neapolitan chords, more commonly you'll just see the capital letter N, and that stands for Neapolitan. So just be on the lookout for that. So once we know what pitches go into the chord, C natural, E, and G, then we can start distributing the voices. Typically, Neapolitan chords show up in first inversion, so I'm going to want to take the third of the chord, in this case an E, and I'm going to put that in the bass. Once I've done that, then I can distribute the other voices. Now with Neapolitan chords, we're dealing with two tendency tones. That is, we have the lowered second scale degree. Anytime we put an accidental on a pitch, that becomes a tendency tone. So we can't double that. And we also have the lowered 6th scale degree, which is a natural tendency tone, so we can't double that. That means we have one tone left that we can double, and that is the third of the chord, or the bass. So in this case, we're going to want to double the E. Now we can distribute the other voices in any way that we want, as long as we're following the rules of good voice distribution. So in this case, I'm going to put my C natural in the soprano. It could go in the alto or the tenor just as well. And I'm going to put the E natural, the doubled E natural, in the alto, and I will put my G natural, my flat six, in the tenor. Now that we have the chord spelled, we need to resolve it. Neapolitan chords are predominant chords, which means that they're going to resolve to some sort of dominant chord. Whether it's a dominant triad or a dominant seventh, we have some choices as to what we can do with that. So I know that, since I'm going to a dominant chord, I'm going to be going to a chord that has a root of F sharp, and if I spell the chord up from there, of course I'm going to have an A sharp, remember to raise that leading tone in the minor mode, and then a C sharp as the fifth of the chord. If I want a seventh on there, I'm also going to put the chord seventh, or E, 
on that chord. I oftentimes like to start by writing the bass line, since that's pretty much given to me. Scale degree 4, the bass of the Neapolitan, typically steps up to scale degree 5, the root and bass of the dominant chord. Next, I like to find the tendency tones, and I have two of them. Tendency tones, of course, are tones that have to resolve a particular way. In a Neapolitan chord, the Neapolitan scale degree, the flat second scale degree, has to resolve down to the leading tone. So that's going to take care of my A sharp. My C natural has to go down to A sharp. There's no other way that we can resolve that thing. Neapolitan scale degrees must go to the leading tone. My other tendency tone, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, is my lowered sixth scale degree. And that is my G, and that is going to want to go down to scale degree five. So I find it here in my tenor, and I make that step down to double the root of the dominant chord. That leaves one tone left, and that's the doubled E. Since it's a doubled tone, I want to make sure that my two doubled notes are going opposite directions. So whereas I stepped up in the bass to get to the root of the dominant chord, I'm going to step down, or leap down in this case, in my alto to get to the remaining tone of my dominant chord. notice I have a leap there from E down to C sharp. Not necessarily a terrible thing, but that does create a bit of what we call a cross relation between the flat second scale degree in the soprano, the C natural, to the C sharp in the alto in the dominant chord. Oftentimes I want to try to avoid those, and the easy way to avoid that is keep that E on the common tone and make it a dominant seventh chord. So now I have, it's an incomplete dominant seventh chord, but I have all the important tones. I have the root, which is doubled. I have the third, the leading tone, and I have the chord seventh. There are other common resolutions of these Neapolitan chords. That is, if you notice, we start out with that Neapolitan scale degree leaping down to the leading tone. Oftentimes composers like to smooth out that motion, and so one way that we can do that is we can simply put in a passing tone from the C natural down to the A sharp. It didn't take long for composers to figure out that they could harmonize that passing tone, and there's two ways that they would typically harmonize that. That is, what chords can fit with a B in it, that would lead smoothly from the predominant Neapolitan chord to the dominant chord that follows it. Well, one easy option is to extend the dominant chord in a way that we do practically every day, and that is using a cadential 6-4 chord. B is the tonic pitch. It's a part of a cadential 6-4 chord. So what we can do is we can take our Neapolitan scale degree, step it down to scale degree 1, harmonize that with a 1-6-4 chord, and then have that 1-6-4 resolve as it normally would to a dominant seventh chord. And that looks and sounds like this. Another option, which is also kind of fun, but a little bit more chromatic, is to take that same B natural and harmonize it using a secondary leading tone chord. And that typically is done by creating a 7-7 seven, seven of 5. And if you need a little bit more information about secondary leading tone chords, I have a video about that. Just check out my YouTube channel and you can find that and figure out what that's all about. And that looks and sounds like this. Now you may be wondering where the Neapolitan chord got its name. 
Well, back in the 1800s, there was a musicologist who was writing about harmonic usage in various national traditions. And when he came across this chord, he said something along the lines of, this is a harmony used in the style of the composers from Naples. Of course, he was wrong. It really has very little to do with Naples. Composers in Naples used it, but so do composers all over the continent. So, uh, Neapolitan's a bit of a, a misnomer. It's not really an accurate name for what the chord is, but the name stuck, and that's why we call it that today. Neapolitan chords are really beautiful in the way that they can be used, and really flexible also. What I've gone through in this video are just a couple of the ways that Neapolitans can be used. There are definitely some more advanced ways that they can be used, but I'm going to save those for another video. Well, that should be enough to get you started writing and resolving Neapolitan chords. Play around with them a little bit. They're very fun chords. There's lots of things you can do with them, and they get a beautiful sound. They can really enhance the music that you're composing. Well, that does it for this video. If you found it helpful, as always, please make sure you like it. Feel free to leave constructive comments down below. And as always, subscribe to my YouTube channel for the latest Music Theory Bites as they become available. Until next time.